I got to know what Mr. Brust is doing because I'm like totally, totally bewildered by some of the stuff that I've heard. Hello, YouTube. Welcome in. I'm hoping you're having a good day. A better day than uh, some of these freaking YouTubers because holy shit, YouTube is going crazy right now. But we're going to watch this video by Mudahar. Very, very interested in what is going on. Come join us on Twitch if you ever have time at twitch.tv forward slash hex underscore juice. We stream live daily except for on Sundays where we watch movies in my Discord. Links are in the description down below for all of that. Let's get into it. <laughs> Gals, me Mudahar, and about a week ago, uh, we had actually looked into one of the wildest internet stories in quite a long time regarding Chris Tyson and, by extension, the group known as Mr. Beast, that entire organization, the largest channel on YouTube sporting over 300 million something subscribers. And Which I'm still shocked by. 300 million is absolutely bananas, bonkers, insane, absurd wild it's just such a crazy thing being a youtuber i think hearing numbers like that and seeing the number of views that he gets because to me the power associated with that the influence you have the amount of money that you're making is like insane it's like hard for me to even comprehend being a youtuber now like it's so different now seeing seeing that like i don't know it's insane and of course it was a massive scandal that rocked the internet and in fact our entire platform at youtube to its complete core a story that involves a creator from one of the largest teams on the platform allegedly engaging in some unsavory, inexcusable behavior towards right. minors. Now, since then, a lot has actually happened. And if you don't have any idea, I'd highly recommend you go check out a video I made six days ago titled, Mr. Beast Has Some Terrible Friends. I think the entire title and everything is pretty self-explanatory. July right. 22nd, 2024, a user known as Dogpack404 uploaded this video on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, with the tag, I worked for Mr. Beast. Ava Chris Tyson is the tip of the iceberg. But it really took one person who worked at Mr. Beast's uh, view stats organization. I have a question for y'all. It's, it's a question. It's maybe a statement that I'd like a response to. I don't know. I have not felt like I understand why the stuff with Ava Chris Tyson is so specifically like attributed to Mr. Beast. Like I understand the connection and I don't think many people would have ever even heard of Ava Chris Tyson without Mr. Beast. But I guess my question is like, why does it essentially seen by so many people as being like a subsidiary issue of Mr. Beast as a person that Ava Chris Tyson was weird in things like separate from the Mr. Beast stuff? Because uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't believe anything that has happened has been in any way connected to the Mr. Beast stuff. Is that correct or incorrect? I have not. They were close. Yes. But like that doesn't make him accountable for something that somebody else did because he knew everything and he didn't do anything to stop it. Is there proof that he knew everything? It's separate, but uh, they're Mr. Beast's friend, and there's proof that Mr. Beast kind of knew he was into it. We'll probably pull it up. Okay, we'll see if Buddha Hart talks about it. Organization known as Chucky eventually come out and say, I quickly want to debunk some of the information in this video. Since the guy who made it was on my team, it's my decision to fire him for erratic behavior. He worked at the company for less than a month and wasn't an employee for most of the videos he mentions to have a knowledge on. Mm -hmm. So, of course, directly referencing Dogpack 404's 3 million viewed video right on, on YouTube. So obviously this video kind of struck it off, went viral, and pretty much became a solid serious hit piece on Jimmy. And there's a few allegations that I want to cover from this 53 minute long video, part one by the way, where there's three massive allegations towards the enterprise. For example, allegation number one, many of Mr. Beast's videos are fake, contests are unfairly rigged, and contestants are often undisclosed friends and families of Mr. Beast's employees or employees oh, themselves. Oh, interesting. Undisclosed friends and family of Mr. Beast's employees or employees themselves. That's interesting. Number two, Mr. Beast has run multiple illegal lotteries targeting children. Uh, the user estimates I, they profited over $10 million from these lotteries. And number three, Mr. Beast knowingly sold merch with fake autographs while claiming on his website that the autograph piece is genuine, which of course, of course- Is that a common thing? I feel like that's happened before. Like the faking signature thing. I feel like that, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I feel like that's like a common thing. I don't think that's like that crazy. However, I will allow it to be explained to me why I should care. According to this user is fraud in their opinion. And it kind of sounds close to it. Now, before we jump into that video in specific and actually look at some of these claims in depth, I wanted to look at another massive situation that broke out. About a couple days ago, a massive Discord leak allegedly happened from Chris Tyson's server. Somewhere around 500,000 messages ended up actually being allegedly leaked for the world to see. Okay. Now, there's one user by the name of Nathan W. 
basically posted, AV Chris Tyson from Mr. Beast, massive Discord server leak, chriscott.github.io. And basically this website was timed to come out. It became such a massive thing that there were streams on Twitter, YouTube that were gaining up to around 400,000 something live viewers. Again, I don't know how these things are exactly calculated, but a lot of people were excited to see some of the wildest Discord leaks to allegedly come out. These leaks were uploaded to a GitHub where again, anybody can download all of these. So for example, you can see bot commands, you can see general chat all the way from one to eight and a full Jeez. version of the general chat all the way tabulating to 21 something megabytes. Now, That's crazy. <laughs> Sorry, just like the amount is like kind of mind blowing to me. You would just see a bunch of brain rot, just like a bunch of people doing brain rot stuff and fooling. Like, I, I, I'm like, I feel like it's like the least interesting shit ever. <laughs> but like, it's crazy. Just like, it, uh, that's so much. Those are all zipped files too. Holy. If you're wondering how this is done, basically using chat exporter tools for Discord servers, you can rip off any entire server you want and basically archive it for the world to see. And one example of it was general chat logs number five where one okay. user could actually see multiple individuals typing things out and discussing this matter. Now, for context sake, there are some censored names, and I believe those censored names belong to minors. Okay. Now, obviously, when it comes to messages like these, I really do want to say that this is all alleged. I have no way to confirm these messages, and of course, if you've ever been watching my content when I cover serious situations like this, you know that my barometer of believing a message really means if I can actually access the server and refresh things on my own. It's right. why I strive to actually capture my own footage, so when I do show it on my channel, I can actually sit here proudly and say, I'm not afraid of any legal backlash because what I've recorded is absolutely true and honest. I think that is a very good standard to set and a very good thing to want. However, I think it would be crazy for somebody to fake like 10 zipped fo folders of Discord messages. <laughs> to be fair, not impossible, but like, like faking like 10 different zip files of just Discord messages would be an insane task. But I think that's a very good standard to set. And I think it's it's very important to acknowledge that you cannot personally identify that all of it is real and true. That's good. But in this situation, this actual Discord rip was corroborated by one of the initial, uh, you know, victims in the situation, Lava, oh, well. who ended up saying, based on the recent screenshots and messages, I would like to say a statement about the Discord. This was five or six years ago, and I thought I had a good memory of the situation, but I was wrong. After reading the chat logs, the stuff was inappropriate and wrong. I spoke based on my memory of the situation, and I still do not remember these conversations, but they definitely happened. Wow. These conversations should not have happened with people at the age I was at the time. I strongly condemn them, and I still believe I am not a grooming victim, but these conversations should never have happened with me and any other minor in the Discord. Now, it's obviously, you know, wild, and it's crazy. I don't think you should have minors in your Discords. Unless you are scrubbing and heavily moderating everything, especially in very large discords, I just feel like we try to keep that out. Like there's no way of 100% identifying that every person is over the age of 18. I guess my question is, how aware are we that these people are not minors? Because to a certain extent on the internet, you can lie. Unless you are literally carding every individual that joins your discord server, it can be difficult. But also, I'm going to go ahead and go with the assumption that it was understood that there were minors, like several minors in the Discord. Maybe we just don't talk about anything weird or sus. Post some pictures of Coco Melon or something. You know, put the put the dancing fruit videos in there. If you know there's a bunch of kids, but don't don't be talking about crazy stuff. Easy to see that there is some retraction in how this person originally handled this. Obviously, they admit that these you know, messages we're about to look into should be condemned, should never have happened. And it is kind of tough when you come across somebody who says they're not a victim, but at the end of the day, when you are a minor exposed to adults speaking in derelict, disgusting ways, right. ultimately, no matter what, you still are a victim of something. And I think it's absurd to say otherwise, but obviously this is a touchy, touchy subject. Yeah, that's very touchy. It's also very hard when you are not an adult to really understand the power imbalances and things that go on. Some people never fully understand the effect that a relationship with an adult that was inappropriate had on them. And so like, you can't call someone a victim if they say that they're not. You can also acknowledge like, that shit is not appropriate and it was not okay. And and the person who should have not been doing that were the adults in the situation, Ava Chris Tyson, whoever else was in that discord. They also say that they've seen the leaks and while not as nearly damning as everyone thought they would be, there's a few individuals in the leaks who deserve to be investigated. One named Milk, who is an IRL friend of Chris and the same age as them. Was someone mean and I'm brain freak, of course the person who linked to this actual leaked Discord messages, grew okay. to despise and I'm sure he will agree with me on that. He was a disturbed individual and we fought tooth and nail with Chris to get him banned. Which did eventually happen and I encourage you all to read them thoroughly. So while these people are discussing this whole situation, I think it's time to rip the bandaid off and look through some of the more disgusting things. 
Okay. Now, obviously, some of the amalgamations of this have been allegedly Chris the Mean God, who was Ava Tyson at the time, uh, you know, pre-transition. And of course, you've got Discount Milk, the person that we should be watching out for, according to some of these victims. We're already acknowledging that these people are not fully adults, which is f***ing gross. 16 and legal in some state. Ew. I was going to make a little bit of like a moment to talk about like cherry picking evidence or whatever. Never mind. Never mind. I take that shit back. Yucky. Never mind. I have I have no benefit of the doubt for anything. Ew. One thing that we weren't able to pull from any of these Discord Ew. messages were attachments. I believe that Discord Ew. actually removes the attachments or doesn't really parse them. Ew. But when it comes to texts, these are backed up. And again, all of this is very alleged. I just want to repeat. So one of them was this attachment where Chris says, she's only 14. Damn. What? Ew. Ew. Do you think she was 16 and legal in some states? Ew. Ooh, of course. If she's 14, I'm 14. Ew. I don't even want to know what those attachments are, and I'm glad that I don't need to. I don't get. Now, to, I don't have to I'm know. Not lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm about to throw up a little bit in my mouth because reading that absolutely absolutely disgusts every little fiber Ew. of my being right there reading that shit. Now that Ew. image when looking through the actual Discord server leaks ended up being an attachment to Bad Bobby, that one girl who was 14 at the time. Yeah, fucked up shit to be sharing, especially when you got actual minors allegedly involved in a server like this. So Ew. of course, the next thing is Chris or uh, Chris the meme god sharing shit. For anybody that doesn't remember, Shad Base, who basically is spawned- I hate having to know that this individual existed. I did not know until this situation. I wish I had never needed to know that he exists. On his own level of controversy, where a lot of creators, especially back then, were real- Not just that, actually. It's not just that they existed. It's also that they were encouraged, venerated, and accepted. Insane. Friendly with the guy. I'm just going to contextualize it all the way back to Ava Tyson's case, okay? Shad Base was a prolific- terrible lowly drawer out in the world, lowly artist, that ended up actually drawing real children in a very, very disgusting manner. Now, in this situation, I just want to- Which I believe is illegal. Reiterate that people who argue that this is a free speech perspective, I would say that drawing actual, you know, people or depictions of actual children like this uh, falls under obscenity laws in the United States, which are not, by the way, protected via free speech, okay? Ew. So, yeah, it's a pretty touchy legal subject, and uh, if you're somebody that's such a fan of this person, I believe you should be investigated by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. But, of course, when you go down into it, you Ew. can see Milk going, Loli God is back, referring to good old Chris the Meme God. Insane shit. Chris going, allegedly, that's where you're wrong, kiddo. And of course, one emoji. Milk going, bruh, I just make my own seasoned salt out of the tears of children on Discord. This is why we ban anybody in my Discord if we even suspect that they're a kid now. Because we don't we don't even allow any like crazy adult content in my Discord. My Discord's really heavily moderated and we don't allow NSFW, any adult content really. But like this is why we just ban anybody who we have even a slight suspicion is it is a minor because it's just like i don't want this i don't want kids to just see weird shit like this even if it's something that was just up for like a second but they still saw it like i just i don't want to like i don't ever want to be part of something like that and chris it's somewhere weird. down there going so allegedly i just eat the children insane okay of course somebody here gets a little bit of fear they said i don't have any issues with the channel what i have an issue with are minors that have access to said channel insane chris goes, is there even a way to do that Milk goes, no, not really, not really, no. So what do we do, remove it? You absolutely can do stuff to prevent minors from having access to specific channels. Everybody knows that there are pretty simple ways of segregating who has access to what, like, channels. That being said, how the fuck are you going to check that people are minors or not? Like, ew. Probably should if there are minor. My personal opinion is if there's anything NSFW in your Discord, you just shouldn't allow kids. Even if it's like a specific channel because you cannot be sure. You can't be sure. People lie. Like, dude, that's crazy. Anywhere near the server. And then you got Nathan going, no, people like it. Even if there was a way anyone can lie about their age, LMFAO. Chris is like, yeah, true. I mean, to be fair, the internet's full of disgusting stuff. And of course, Milk says, Discord says that if you can't regulate it, don't have one. Shrug. It's the responsibility of the server owner to protect minors. Chris goes, what if I'm a parent? Bro, what? Because there is like, there is a certain reality that like you cannot be 100% sure that every single person on the internet is the age they say they are. Obviously, kids lie, people lie. It's not that hard to do on the internet. However, if there's even a suspicion, I just ban. And that's what everybody should do. Because like at all costs, you should want to protect children from seeing shit that is not okay for them. If you know that it's a kid, ban them!
am ignoring legal implications of things, which is a big deal and does matter. But even at base, like, why would you even want to possibly expose a child to something like that? It's weird. It's gross. It's nasty. What am I, a parent? Discount Milk goes, lol. And Lava in this situation goes, I say we get rid of it because the fan base of Beast and Chris are mostly under 18. Leave it to a child at the time to have more logical sense than the alleged coom-brained adults. That's crazy that the kid is like, I think that since Mr. Beast has mostly child, like a younger fans, we should get rid of the NSFW channel. And they're like, nah. Allegedly it got messed to the point where even one of the minors allegedly messaged to Chris, you have a massive referring to male human genitalia. Huh? Now, it's this kind of stuff where obviously- And w like, what? I'm gonna leave it where it's at before I continuously just keep throwing up in my mouth. The reality of this situation and how it's presented is obviously if you're a child, uh, don't be in a Discord server like this, but more importantly, if you're a parent, if you're an adult, never ever let your children join any Discord servers where even 1% of this filth is spoken. Don't let your kid have Discord on their phone. I'm gonna be real. There's some Discord servers, like there is so much weird, nasty, seedy, gross, Fucking heinous shit on Discord. Don't even let your kids have Discord. Like it, like they said, the the moderation is on the behalf of the the server uh, owner. Discord does not moderate their shit well enough. People get away with insane stuff. Their entire server is just full of illegal content. Dude, don't let your kids have Discord servers at all. Jesus. You know, it's one of the reasons why I'm actually just don't even let them be on the, the website, family, whether they be related to be my blood or they're my friend's kids, I am very much vigilant on whenever they're on social media, especially on places like Discord, where there is an interspersed mix at times for better or yeah. for worse with actual adults and people under the age of 18. This kind of shit for happening allegedly by one of the largest or at least in the proximity of one of the largest channels on the internet with a very heavy kid fan base, is something that absolutely should never have happened. And it's something that should have been yeah. watched out for. And it never should have gotten to the point where people are allegedly picking through the bones of these Discord messages. And I do wanna say, like, the that is such an important point about this, is that Ava Chris Tyson was doing this while being in the closest possible proximity to someone, A, that is one of the, like, probably the biggest YouTube creator in ever. And B has a massively child audience. That in and of itself is so fucking disgusting and horrifying. Now, obviously, since then, there's been more stuff that has come out. For instance, allegedly, Nathan W. had the NSFW logs from the Tyson server, which apparently they did not have at the moment. They misinterpreted and didn't validate the information before making statements. Now, obviously, some have speculated that maybe there was a payoff, but I think we're getting into the point of conspiracies. Now, obviously, at this moment in time, ladies and gentlemen, it is wild to see this situation blow up the way that it is. But I don't want to stick around this Ava Tyson stuff longer than it already is. I think until a third-party investigation happens, and God, I hope something comes out of it, it's probably more ideal to look into Dogpack 404's video that had those three massive allegations we looked at. So, Dog Okay, all right, thank God. I'm done. I don't want to talk about this shit anymore. It's so disgusting. Pack 404's video pretty much becomes like a modern day content cop where they go through a lot of older Mr. Beast videos and cover across those serious allegations. For example, one of them was that these videos are very much faked. And in moments, they do use CGI to apparently spice up the video and make it look more interesting than it actually is. Host, uh -huh. and he clearly touches the laser here, but whatever, let's assume that it's all real time. When he reaches the bottom- Okay, but like the thing is, okay, about the laser thing specifically, how would you even be able to like verify that something was like the whole laser shit is dumb. I've seen the clips of the Mr. Beast, like the laser shit where you can't touch the laser or else you lose or whatever or else you're eliminated. I've always thought that shit was dumb as hell because it's really fucking hard to verify that they touch the laser. Like it's a dumb concept. It's not really all of that. Like it doesn't really stand up to, to rigorous investigation of fairness and all that stuff because like it's not like it. It beeps when you touch the laser or it leaves a mark or burns you or something. You know what I mean? Anyway, anyway, I just keep going. The laser shit was always dumb to me is the point. Floor, he has to turn these water valves. Now you can tell that these valves aren't actually connected to anything because the water flows out in an instant and it happens when he's not even touching the valve. The contestant also right. goes back to the first valve unaware that anything had happened and he's still able to spin it. So the valve seems to spin freely and isn't actually connected to the flow of water. So you could assume that producers might be off camera with remote switches to trigger the flow of water. And assuming they've tested this, the producers might know how long it takes for the water to clear out of the room. So they can sort of decide on the fly how many turns of the valve it takes or... 
Now, the thing about some of this stuff is obviously... That's pretty fake. I guess, like, if we're talking about the ability to be able to manipulate results and all that, that's pretty bad. That's pretty fake. When you that's make a bad. YouTube video, you're probably going to spice things up a little bit for the audience, clearly. For sure. So whenever you have, like, things like CGI or more, you know, interesting scenarios, especially when this is kind of filmed like a lower-budget version of Survivor, a television show for, again, the YouTube audience, where it is right. a reality TV-based in a way, you're probably going to expect some sentence enhancers, right? Some sure. spicy moments in the video that keep people watching. At the end of the day, this is a YouTube enterprise, and the entirety is to get people watching a video from the beginning all the way to the end. Yeah. And obviously, in other situations, obviously, as we have seen in this, there were other people who apparently were close to Mr. Beast, allegedly being hired in this situation, that weren't entirely random. And while the receipts provided by this person ultimately have to be countered by the Mr. Beast company, she's your hiring manager. I actually recognize a lot of people in this video, including Jimmy's own girlfriend. So yeah, the random oh. subscribers you see in challenges are actually never random. They're almost always local to Mr. Beast and oftentimes friends and family of Mr. Beast employees or just the employees themselves. And when to an extent, I guess a lot of it has to do with presentation of randomness and fairness, right? When we present things as being random and fair, and then they're not, it's dog shit. I can understand from his perspective, not having all of the niceties and all of the ability of, we'll say, like an actual cable television network to set up a competition. To a certain extent, it does make some amount of sense to use people that you know what to expect from them, you know? Because if you are quite literally taking random people off the street, there adds a really large possibility of bad behavior, of people turning out to be f***ing crazy, of people literally coming to the function to cause problems and be horrendous. And there's not a lot of ways to like control that. So like I get that to a certain extent that it just like it can it can be a good thing to be more controlled about who you add in. The reality is if you really want to be honest and fair and all of those things, you would just interview people beforehand and have them audition and stuff. Yeah, they would do interviews and auditions to vet people beforehand and do background checks and stuff. But the fact is that that takes a lot of time and a lot of money and we're shortcutting because it's YouTube. When they do pull someone from outside of North Carolina, it's usually somebody who's in the industry. It's all these things when added together ultimately lead people into thinking these challenges are not exactly challenges, but rather money-making ventures that ultimately aren't exactly meant to be for giving back. It's just meant to right. be enticing, exciting videos that ultimately do not you know, really give back randomly to people, allegedly in this situation. But I want to look at one case that was brought up in this video when it talks to a creator known as Rosanna Pansino, who is actually somebody that alleged to be a winner or close to the winning pool in a hide and seek tournament that they had, but was ultimately cut down, allegedly, in replacement of Logan Paul, a much larger creator. I do want to say I've never understood why she got so much hate for this because she got massive, massive hate and harassment for saying this. Um, people being like basically calling her entitled and all of this stuff. But if you're under the illusion, if you're under the impression that something is meant to be a fair contest and then you find out that in post you've just been removed and the results have been skewed, I would be mad about that too. But it's not. If they were having problems finding people, they can see kind of what area you're in. Uh, mm. And they came to my area many times and I was in the smallest cupboard. <laughs> they had like big ones, medium ones, and small ones. I contorted this little four foot 10 body into the smallest space and I was in there for hours. <laughs> and they didn't even open the door because they were like, a person can't even fit in there. So they went in oh there and they God. opened all the cabinets and my heart was like, oh, they're gonna find me, they're gonna find me. And then I could hear them saying like, she's not here. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, she's not here. <laughs> the other thing that they said is absolutely no climbing in the air vents or the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And they said it's because they do all their wiring in mm -hmm. the ceiling. Up here. Okay. That's that was so loud it scared the f out of me. <laughs> I think the fact that that it was even like something that happened that somebody just broke like safety regulations and they still and and you see on the screen that they did so is wild as f because I guess to me that does indicate how much they don't really care about those safety regulations. Like, yeah, you know, you can, you get, you should follow the rules and you should like be safe and not like touch wiring, you know, whatever. But like, realistically, if it's a good storyline, we'll ignore it and it's all fine. That's not how safety regulations are supposed to work. That's crazy. If it was held accountable, especially because this was a YouTube original production. Mm. Zach would have been eliminated for cheating. He broke the rules and I guarantee you if I claimed if I climbed in the ceiling, 
Mr. Beast would eliminate me. Now, at the end of the day, if this is entirely a true statement, then yeah, it is obviously shitty that a game that is hosted where there is an actual cash prize in this situation, even if that money is meant to go to the creator or is ultimately meant to be donated through the creator, the cash money present makes it a little bit sketchy. And one right. of the things that was brought up by Rosanna that actually caught my interest was that it was a YouTube, uh, you know, premium production. Now, I guess my, okay, I'm, I'm sure he's gonna explain this in detail so I don't want to like speculate too far I guess I wonder a if that means like they produced it meaning they spent the money to produce it or if it's more so like it's distributed via YouTube premium essentially like how Netflix will buy something that already exists and distribute it through Netflix you know like how does that work and also does that mean that it's more close and more able to be regulated as it would be if it was like a cable television you know not like syndicated television kind of thing to understand one of the things that really piqued my head in this situation was the television show survivor now, for anybody that doesn't know, Survivor is one of the longest running reality television shows out there. And right. throughout its entire run, there's been some controversies where it's been alleged that producers have deliberately, you know, messed with the odds on the show to make a spicier production. But ultimately, because of the cash prizes and the fact that it is a technical game show, from my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, it was because of that that they ended up getting sued over this in court. And right. while the actual results have been mediated in the background, it is something to raise awareness to. Earlier in the show, there was one individual known as Stacey Stillman. Now, of course, in this entire case, one actual lawsuit that actually happened all the way back in February 6, 2001, when it was at least reported, one of the survivor people, Stacey Stillman's lawsuit, ended up going against CBS. And of course, the action, which we're going to read here, arises out of the unlawful and fraudulent administration of a contest known as Survivor. The nationally broadcast television show Survivor was so-called reality game show where a group of contestants inhabiting a tropical island were to cast votes to eliminate one by one right. other contestants and a sole contestant remained. The producers of Survivor engaged in a scheme for the purpose of prearranging or predetermining its outcome. I guess something that is striking me, which is interesting because I'll be real, I watch a lot of reality television, but the thing is about reality television is that they can skew things so much further than who like wins at the end. I watch a lot of RuPaul's Drag Race personally, I'm a big fan of that. But like one of the things that they'll do is what they actually do is they edit the people into a particular kind of character to create a storyline over over the course of the season, right? I know my audience does not have a lot of crossover with the RuPaul's Drag Race fandom, okay? However, RuPaul's Drag Race is really known for this because they will take some of the contestants and essentially edit them to have like, they call it the villain edit, right? And regardless of whether or not that person is actually the villain, they will edit them to be the villain of the season to add storyline, to add spice. It's a, But it's an editing thing. And so like, but that is able to be done because it is, you know, however many episodes, 12, 14, 16, whatever. Because it is a long running over time thing, it's not a single episode that needs to be edited down to 40 minutes. The reality is, is that you're able to skew storylines and create storylines and pull storylines out of the things that happen because there's so many things that happen. There's so much footage. There's so much development over the like two months of filming where the problem is that the only way to do that in a very short amount of time in the way that Mr. Beast does it is to skew results. And so I guess I wonder if there is actually like a super ethical way of making like really high quality reality television style game show style content on YouTube because the 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 nature of it needing to be like one episode does incentivize this kind of behavior no matter what because you don't have time to develop characters through the season. Especially because he has that like really high energy, fast paced thing happening, thing happening, thing happening, thing happening, you know? By influencing, persuading, or intimidating contestants to cast votes for certain of the contestants. The unlawful scheme resulted in a premature expulsion of the plaintiff contestant, defrauded her and the viewing public, and altered the ultimate outcome of Survivor. Accordingly, the plaintiff of the former Survivor contestant, Stacey Stillman, seeks damages and restitutions on behalf of herself and the general public for the defendant's violation of law, as alleged herein. So basically the allegation was that there was some serious fraud that happened, right? If it's a right. game show, you expect things to be fairly held. And of course, one of the things is I wanted to look at the actual laws regarding it. So according to RC, or Riverside County Law Library, right. the legal game show practices for 500. According to this, uh, you know, of course, somebody had written, the actual, you know, person writing this, wrote Survivor, Big Brother, Amazing Race, Iron Chef, and RuPaul's Drag Race are some of the most watched reality competition shows. 
I like all of those shows, except for Big Brother. I never got into Big Brother, but I really like Iron Chef too. God, Iron Chef was good. Apart from their oh. personal enjoyment of the shows, what piqued their interest in writing this post was keeping it real, how the FCC fights fake reality TV shows, with something known as 47 USC 509. So what is actually said here is this came to be codified uh, during the infamous quiz show scandals of the 1950s. So basically what it came to was that the quiz shows back then, so for instance, the $64,000 question and 21 were actually apparently rigged to boost ratings. Mm -hmm. And evidence was shown that the producers would often prep contestants with answers and coach contestants to conceal deceit while they were playing. Congress had to actually step in and amend the 1934 Communications Act to outlaw the rigging of game shows. Okay, is that f***ed up? Yes. Do I believe that those shows were probably absolute cinema? Also, yes. But obviously, it's, it's ethically very f***ed up and weird, obviously. So that same law in the year 2000... And it's also specifically f***ed up because there's a cash prize. With the cash prize being the thing, rigging the contestants is so gross and unethical and, and horrible and shouldn't be done, right? Um, but that, like, the main issue is, like, competing for a cash prize. If you take away the honesty and the fairness of that, it kind of ruins the whole point of it. Thousands, when it came to legal commentators and scholars, they basically said that shows like Survivor should be held against the same standard by 47 USC 509. So right. when it came to this specific case, from my understanding, uh, what should have been a slam dunk actually wasn't. The case itself was settled outside of court for an undisclosed amount. And legal right. scholars have noted that the narrowly tailored language of 47 USC 509 only covers reality competition shows that challenge contestants using intellectual skills, knowledge, or chance. Right. And these would be games like Jeopardy, Wheel of Fortune, or Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Hmm. That's interesting for sure. Intellectual skills, intellectual knowledge, or chance. So realistically, that would probably need the language to be more broadened so that you could cover more types of reality television. Now again, here's the thing. The law is different depending on how you you know run a show. And you can read this on you know Cornell's Law School right here when it comes to 47 US Code 509. Now the thing about it is, is obviously I'm not a lawyer. And the reason I'm going through this is because it sounds eerily similar to something that could happen with Mr. Beast's show. Mm -hmm. Now, being the fact that these are YouTube videos, this is not something that is necessarily being broadcast on live television. So if it's just somebody uploading a YouTube video, maybe they can kind of bend the rules and get away with it. But when it becomes a YouTube production, or as we'll look later, a Las Vegas-based production with Amazon regarding the Beast games, it becomes a bit of a different story. You know, right. can you necessarily alter the events of a show if it's even allegedly happening by Mr. Beast? It's one of the things that are Again, I guess it just really depends because like I think now at this time there's no precedent set for something like that. So I, I think probably the reality is is the re that's why he's doing it. But yes, I think YouTube in general does need to be more regulated because this shit is obviously unacceptable. But I think right now the reality is is that there's just no precedent. It doesn't really matter. So as lawyers keep saying, just keep doing it. Who cares? We're fine. We're chilling. really wish that they had 100% responded to as this video had come out four days ago. Because this can be a serious problem for Mr. Beast down the road if he mm -hmm. decides to get into television or big streaming services like he already is with Amazon. If he's right. running a game show or a reality competition show like this where there are possible games of chance or games of intelligence. Imagine if he hosts like a trivia tournament and it turns out maybe there was some prepping behind the scenes. Does he start falling underneath this US Code 509 where he can legally mm. be held liable by the FCC or any broadcasting wing? So again, I'm not a lawyer. I wonder, does that kind of stuff apply to Netflix? Because, like, Netflix does, like, some reality television show stuff, some game show stuff. Do, do those rules apply to Netflix, or is it only something that is broadcast on, like, cable TV? And I really wish that the actual lawyers of YouTube would really look into it and see if this same kind of law would even apply to a YouTube video or online production or even a streaming platform. Maybe the law has to catch up. So the next scary part about this was the claim, the allegation of multiple illegal lotteries that Mr. Beast was holding that right. apparently targeted children. So let's watch this. So according to shortstack.com right here, when they were talking about, you know, the law in this situation regarding lotteries, right, which again, uh, very, very, very key elements that you need. For instance, if you live in the U.S., the no purchase necessary law applies to you, whether you're running a giveaway for a tiny mom and pop shop or a major mm -hmm. national brand, okay? So according to lotteries in this situation, Unless you're a government entity, hosting a lottery is a big no-no. A giveaway is considered a lottery. So again, if you're giving things away, it can become a lottery. If, for instance, you have the giveaway offers one or more prizes of value. So in the giveaway, you're giving a prize. The winners of the giveaway are completely chosen at random. And right. the entry requires a payment of money or other consideration. And 
I will say that there is something that applies to streaming in this way, which is that you cannot offer on Twitch. Like if you're if you're a Twitch streamer, right? You cannot offer a giveaway only to your subscribers on Twitch. Everybody has to be allowed to be included in a giveaway on Twitch or else it becomes a lottery because you have to pay your Twitch money in order to join. It's technically still lottery if he rigs who wins. But like, because the thing is that the the audience, it's about the audience understanding. The audience is under the understanding that it's a legitimate lottery. If he lies and it's not a legitimate lottery, that's, I think that's where it would be an issue. For it to be a lottery, they have to pay into it. But they're saying, is it technically a lottery if he rigs it? It is because he presented it as if it was a lottery. It's still him for him to do it regardless though and the word consideration is used loosely to cover anything that is directly or indirectly of value to the company monetary or otherwise so for example you can't require a purchase be made with a sister company or sponsor in exchange for an entry what right. some states deem consideration differs from others so make sure you check with local laws to stay in compliance so this is one of those things if you want to effectively you know give things away and not have it be a lottery you believe you actually have to get rid of one of these elements so as long as you have all three uh, satisfied, so the prize, the randomness, and the consideration, then you effectively fall into a lottery, which is a big no-no. A YouTuber doesn't actually give right. away a prize, or in the case of these live streams, they're illegal lotteries where the only way to win a prize is by making a purchase. And obviously, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm just going to show you the law and then show you irrefutable evidence of what's being done, and you can make your own conclusions. The FT... I still want to know when, if he's continued to do these lotteries or if he's, this is something that's in the past. It doesn't really matter so much because he did do it and it is illegal if, if all is true, right? But I would like to know if he's continued to do that into 2023, 2024, like into like now, because uh, 2020 is the one that I've seen thus far. And that is a good amount of time ago. So I, I'm just curious about that. And if they did stop, why, you know? PC defines a lottery as containing three elements, a valuable prize, <laughs> random chance, and consideration, which can be time or effort, but in most cases is just payment. To successfully run a contest or a sweepstakes, you must eliminate one of these factors. A contest, for example, eliminates chance, and a sweepstakes eliminates consideration. In determining if any Mr. Beast giveaways have been illegal lotteries, we need to identify a prize, which is distributed through random chance and cannot be won without spending money. On August 2nd, 2020, Mr. Beast livestreamed him and his friends signing limited edition shirts celebrating 40 million subscribers. Uh, and here are just some of the clips from that stream. For, for those of you who are just joining, if you buy one of our limited edition uh, 40 mil special shirts, we're celebrating 40 million subscribers with a really big video, then we- Dude, this was in 2020, he had 40 million, and now he's at 300 million? That's insane. Well, sign that shirt, and some of them will get random prizes like this. In 10 minutes, right, because we gotta give them time to, to do their car, we'll give two orders $500 each. Five minutes, someone's getting three grand in their someone, In five minutes, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put $1,000 in a random order. Two minutes, newest order gets $2,000. Good luck, everybody. So those amount of clips that we saw, basically people would be buying a shirt, they would put in a prize, and it would randomly be given out. So that's where the allegation of an illegal lottery comes at. Not I'd love to know if it's actually also being sent out. Are we actually sending the $5,000? But yes, that does very much seem like an illegal lottery. There's not really any other way to put it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Obviously with a child fan base and obviously allegedly having an illegal lottery, it's a serious thing that whoever legally works for Mr. Beast has to entirely cover. Now, I have no doubt that Mr. Beast probably has some of the best lawyers and a legal team out there, and this is probably even vetted so many times over by their legal team. And of course, that's entirely up to them to respond to this allegation that's being made. Based on what I've just seen, I actually kind of can see where Dog Pack is coming from, right? This mm -hmm. is basically, you know, in my opinion, it is something dodgy. And I don't know whether it was legal. I think regardless of the specific legality of it being an illegal lottery, this is obviously bizarre predatory behavior, especially when we go back and we remember that Mr. Beast has a primarily young, under 18 child audience. Regardless of the specific legality, if he can be sued, if he can be prosecuted, regardless, that shit is mega super insane predatory, especially with your young, incredibly young audience for Mr. Beast. People that maybe cleared up and said, eh, it's fine. Or whether Mr. Beast or somebody on the production side of teams decided on the fly, because it's a live stream, maybe it's worth jumping down this hole. But if you have children in your audience and you are potentially running an illegal lottery, that should never have happened in the first place. And this is where obviously when you- Regardless of legality, I think, um, I think sometimes people overly focus in specifically on legality. Things can be illegal or le can be legal and still be shit. Cheating on your partner is not necessarily illegal. You're still a piece of shit person for doing it doing a lottery system with your child fan base to make money might not necessarily be illegal it's still weird and predatory and sus as f 
work. And I think sometimes getting too caught up in legality, we forget that there are ethical and legal, like moral things that are not necessarily legal things. However, it does seem a bit illegal. Let's be for real, allegedly. You touch upon the mind when it comes to gambling, that's where it gets really scary. That's where it gets fucking unethical. And that's where you have to watch out for this yeah. kind of shit. Right. You know, it reminds me back to a situation I looked at years ago with people like Logan, or not Logan Paul, but Jake Paul and Ricegum, where we actually looked at these. Absolutely delightful content creators, both of them who are known very, very much for their integrity and their moral, high ground, high standing, strong, ethical, moral shit. These online loot box websites where uh, they were given- Oh prize. God, this shit was so gross. This is all the way from like stickers to like the most expensive LA realty, like worth $250 million or some crazy Ew. insane amount. And the thing about it is, obviously when you're exposing children or really anybody to something like that, where they get that rush of winning a prize randomly, that is something where you're tapping into a part of somebody's mind that is incredibly addictive. And especially when you're dealing with gambling addictions that are by far considered some of the worst addictions to have, it's yeah. not a good fucking look. Oh, yeah. Would you guys prefer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a weird thing for me to speak on, given that I'm primarily a gotcha content creator. I guess uh, there is, there's obviously a lot of differences there that I feel like I don't necessarily have to put entirely into words. However, gambling is very bad for you and very bad for your brain. And specifically marketing gambling in this way to children is not good for them. And it's weird and bad and like wrong. I don't make content for children. I make that pretty fucking clear. I don't really like kids, but there's, there is a difference between, you know, it's a casino and willingly walk into it. I, I don't know. It, there's a, there's a lot of nuance there. And so like, uh, I'll be honest that it's kind of awkward to talk about, but like specifically doing these lottery scams to kids is weird and bad and not okay. Would you prefer that we throw money? Especially because like the thing is, is like I do have this understanding that children like idolize Mr. Beast. I have two sisters who are younger both of them idolize Mr. Beast like he's a god. They idolize Mr. Beast and they believe everything he says like it is the word of God. This is like not even legitimately, this is not even an exaggeration. The way that both of my sisters speak on Mr. Beast honestly has stricken me as bizarre in the past. They believe that if you subscribe to Mr. Beast, you could win $20 million. They have no understanding that like so much of it is 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 you know essentially like advertising you know stuff like that i remember back a while a long time ago i asked my sisters like kind of jokingly oh i want to be a famous youtuber who what do you think i should do how should what is like what is my path to becoming a famous youtuber and they said oh copy mr beast's thumbnails and get his attention and he'll make you famous because mr beast is so nice and he wants to help people be famous i see this a lot like kids don't necessarily fully understand the difference between like marketing and tactics and all of those things and like irl for real like what is actually possible that's kind of the thing that's very weird and up about some of this stuff is like and um they do idolize him and so if you see mr beast who you already idolize and you think that he's like fucking jesus saying oh if you buy this shirt you could win five thousand dollars they're gonna go mom 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 can i buy this shirt it's overpriced but we could win five thousand dollars because kids are dumb money in random orders or that we throw items in random orders yeah somebody hey, screamed in chat i want to switch hey buy a shirt in 30 minutes we are giving away my car to some like, there's no fucking adult in the chat going, Oh my god, I wanna switch! I wanna switch! Pick me, pick me! I wanna, I wanna Nintendo Switch! I wanna play Mario Party on my Switch, please! Someone that buys merch. It's Which not each giveaway is its own independent event. You can't give one prize to someone who buys something and a different prize to someone in chat. The prize where you have to buy something is still an illegal lottery. So again, right. another good point being raised, all right? When you're running an event like this, and, you know, I've looked at giveaway sites where obviously sweepstake websites where even if you were incentivized to buy tickets, there usually is a mail-in option. Now, with the mail-in option, you might argue and say, yeah, it's more annoying getting a postcard and like filling it out and actually you know, sending it by snail mail. Maybe that actually costs money. I mean, if you think about it, it's not even a free option. You still have to buy shit, put it together and spend your time sending it out. Sometimes right. it can actually be more expensive than just buying a ticket outright. So yeah, right. there's some ethical concerns right there. But yeah, if you're running an event where you're giving things away, I believe every single item has to be given away with the chance of possibly with a free entry, which it didn't seem like anything, or not all items were in this situation. Again, given that these streams are not accessible anymore, it's hard for me to make that definitive claim, but based on right. what Doc Pack is showing, this is not a good look. This is not a good situation to be in, and it needs to be addressed by the Mr. Beast team. So one of the
Yeah, and again, a really good example of this, very simple, you can't do that on Twitch. You if if you cannot make a giveaway only for your subs. Things that you can do hypothetically is give better prizes to your subscribers, but you cannot have giveaways that are only for your subscribers on Twitch. And that's because it would be an illegal lottery. You can get banned for it. Allegations being made was apparently even the autographs that Mr. Beast is supposed to do for his shirts were faked. And this is a piece of evidence that Dogpack will show in this video. They signed, but I'd be interested to see how they worded that. If the video of this live stream ever resurfaces, I, I think a lot of these claims will be proven true, uh, which Mr. Beast definitely has this stream saved. He saves all his footage. Also, using archive.org, we can see what the website looked like on the day of the stream, and while there's no mention of any sweepstakes whatsoever, uh, it does say this limited T signed by Mr. Beast and crew, uh, but the description says it's signed by a member of the Mr. Beast crew, and it doesn't say anywhere that other members will sign MB, deceiving people into believing it was signed by Mr. Beast. So I'm gonna be real. This is pretty common. I don't think that that is that crazy. That's some advertising magic. It sucks and it's gross. However, I don't think this one is that huge or that important. This is pretty common. This happens a lot in a lot of situations. A lot of times the shit here that's signed, it's like a stamp. I'm sorry to break your aversion on that. This is uh, personally me. I don't really. Uh, Here's a clip of Tyler forging, or not, maybe not forging using Mr. Beast's signature. So Tyler signs M-B, which is Mr. Beast's signature. Then he covers mm -hmm. it, signs his own initials, T-C, smirks, looks around, and then quickly slides the shirt away. Could you make it any more obvious? <laughs> Bro is sus among us on God. <laughs> that was the, the least convincing, more suspicious body language. It looks so now, fucking look, sus. I think that is getting to a point where if you read what's on their website, and you read like, ah, this is signed by Mr. Beast and crew. They're probably legally okay with it just because of the broadness yeah. of language that is used in their description. Obviously, it is kind of weird that he's signing, you know, the autograph from Mr. Beast over here. Maybe we don't do that on screen. He vented in front of absolutely every single person in the entire lobby in electrical. And we're <laughs> and it's like, guys, I'm not sus, I swear. I'm not the imposter. And then just like, you know, sliding it over, signing, smirking at the camera. That's fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's a great catch on the video. But yeah. I don't think that's legally going to like, you know, hold up in a court if they're taken for like fraud or something, I think. Um, just because of the broadness of, of language they used on their website and, and whatnot. So maybe that's actually, you know, something that they'll be, you know, fine from. Now for Feastables, this is actually a Mr. Beast snack company where what they do is they primarily sell like chocolate. And uh, while I'm not a huge fan- Are Feastables good? I've never thought once to buy a Feastable in my life. Are Feastables good? Just get a Kit Kat. I mean, personally, I'm just gonna get a Hershey's chocolate bar. I don't care. Kind of, you know, like chocolate in general. I don't really care much for it. I've had Mr. I've had the uh, Mr. Beast Feastable bars once, and they were okay. Like nothing special. I mean, you know, it, they are what they are. It's a, it's a chocolate bar. Okay, you, you can't right. get much wilder than that. One of the things that was brought up was the giveaways that were present in the candy. So I'm gonna show you a clip. I'm gonna be real. If I want chocolate, I'm just gonna get a fucking jar of Nutella and be a be a nasty. Clip again from Doc Pack's video that delves into that. You know, buy a Feastables, win 10K. Uh, buy a Feastables out of a vending machine, and the vending machine just starts spitting out money. Buy Blood is really fucking Wonka. What the hell? Buy Feastables, and it has a ticket to Disney World, whatever, right? And I don't want to put a lot of like hearsay into this video. You should just believe the receipts that I'm showing you, and not what I'm saying. But I swear to God, I said to somebody at the company, and we our launch of milk, chocolate, and sea salt. We went out, we bought 10 Teslas, loads of cash, and all these prizes you see on the screen. And prizes aside, unlike Hershey's, these bars only have four to five ingredients and just genuinely taste good. Go to feastables.com right now and order some chocolate. Only problem. I'm gonna be real. I'd much rather enter the like Danimals sweepstakes to meet Zach and Cody. You gotta pay taxes on a fucking Tesla, bro. What the f are these kids gonna pay taxes on it with? Um, the chocolate river is deteriorating. All the the only place you'll find no purchase necessary is either on the Feastables Twitter account because it's a rule of the platform, and even still they try to push it. No perch neck or hidden deep in the Feastables website under a FAQ. And to enter for free, you have to mail in separate three inch by five inch hand addressed written index cards up to 10 a day. <laughs> yeah, I think it's probably going to, uh, to, to just beg their parents at Walmart. And again, one good point raised is why not just be able to enter these sweepstakes by the internet anyways, right? Uh, through some form of internet-based verification. Obviously, the whole postcard shit is designed to make the entire process of the free entry that much more annoying. And again, when- That's so 
fucking lame, dude. What a gross ass loophole, to be honest. When it comes to something as small as the candy bar, you know, in 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 in, in price wise, it's probably cheaper to use the paid option than the quote unquote free option in the situation. And I think that's where the law probably should be catching up when it comes to sweepstakes. But yeah, yeah if you want to look at all these receipts in a more in-depth fashion, it's probably advisable you go over to Doc Pack's video and check it out. There's apparently a part two that's supposed to come out. And maybe hypothetically speaking, and this is a crazy concept, we just don't do any of this stuff ever. Instead of trying to find legal loopholes and using it to sell your shitty candy bars, maybe we just don't do that because it's weird and predatory and fucked up and bad and wrong instead of doing the legal loopholes and the the weird like selling gambling to kids but not really shit hypothetically speaking and it's supposed to get even wilder in the situation so looking at one of these actual like uh sweepstake giveaways one of them was still active may 30th 2020 where again you go to feastables and there's like a 7-eleven giveaway or some collaboration where the feastable did you guys hear that 7-eleven is getting japanese stuff like japanese like onigiris and stuff when is that happening i want that I want onigiri. I want onigiri. I'm so, I, I don't really give a f about nothing else. Onigiri, please. Thank you. Hey, like a Lamborghini. And of course, you can see that they've got the no purchase necessary, right? They even got like the giveaway rules right now. And of course, if you look into it, yes, the actual entry point where they say is mail in to receive 49 entries without making a purchase. Hand print your complete name, address, city, state, and zip code email address on a three by five inch card, okay? And mail in a business size 10, number 10 envelope with proper postage <laughs> affixed to that entire, you know, uh, Michigan address. I mean, when's the last time y'all sent a letter in the mail? I bet there's probably people in here and in my YouTube comments who have never done that. So all mail-in entries must be postmarked and received by June 5th to be considered for an entry. Each entry must be mailed separately, okay? You can't even like bundle them all together. They gotta literally make it as fucking annoying as you can imagine. Now, one of the right. other things that almost did get brought up in one of these giveaways was the Feastable cleanup operation, the shelfie cleanup. Now, Mr. Beast tweeted this out, I need your help. Next time you see Feastables in Walmart, if you could clean up the presentation and make it look better, that would make me very happy. So obviously, this is something that you, you should probably talk to Walmart. You guys made my Feastables look ugly. My little waddly sweepstakes Feastables where you could get a Tesla that you can't pay taxes on. You didn't make, you didn't make the, 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 it doesn't look nice. Can you fix it please for me, please? Walmart directly for, I have a team in place. And I shit you not, using the Wayback Machine to look back at the shelfie cleanup and the $5,000 drawing. Yeah, you could actually go in and do the cleanup Wait. for you. Now, given the fact that there's a lot of children- Wait, you could win money for doing that? No shot. In the situation, who are fans of Mr. Beast, I find it a little bit weird to basically ask your audience to clean up the bars for you. If you That's literally read crazy. over here, they tell you, check if the product's on the shelf. If there is, pull the boxes forward and make sure they match the tags below them. We want the next person to see that Feastable bars are the Feastable's price. Be courteous. No one likes rude people and want Walmart. We want Walmart to enjoy selling Feastables and our fans being a mutual customer. So now they cleaned it up. What you got to do is take a picture before and after and send it over. So what they- I'm going to go fight a little motherfucker to try and clean up the shelves at Walmart. I'm going to take that picture. I'm going to send that in and I'm going to win that sweepstakes. They also do say is they only want a photo of the shelf and after. Do not submit a photo of the shelf in your face. And I'm sure a lot of that is for, you know, <laughs> COPA compliance, especially if you got like minors who are sending in potential like photographs. No company really wants that heat, especially even if they're adults for crying out loud. Nobody wants that fucking heat. You know what company did want that heat? Do you guys remember when Nickelodeon asked children to send in pictures of their feet? Oh God, oh God, I'm getting awakened for the most horrible fucking memories, Jesus. Yeah, Dan Schneider is a weird fucking dude, man. I think your fellow era probably said it right. People are going and punching the boxes and taking before and after pictures. I'm pretty sure that might actually be the case, to be honest. I would, dude, I, that's exactly what I would do. And I'd answer like a billion gorillion times. I'm gonna go to every single fucking store in my area, fuck up that box, take a picture. Or actually, I'll take a picture of the box beforehand before I fuck it up. And then I'll fuck it up and take the picture and then I'll leave it fucked up and leave the fucking store. Uh, this, this stuff, this stuff is... I can see when money is on the line, things can get real wild. But again, uh -huh. uh, this is just one of the things that came up and I personally thought it was a little bit too weird uh, to, to, to really let go. Now, of course, going back to the one point of Mr. Beast faking his possible games, one of the things that is coming up is the Mr. Beast Beast games that are being shot in Las Vegas. So This shit is crazy. If this is real, I sincerely hope that more comes out about this situation. If this shit is real, this is the most damning, horrendous shit 
I, I could possibly, this is insane. According to the casino.org, okay, Vital Vegas, yeah, because you know Vegas is all about that gambling shit. It's an upcoming reality competition show where a thousand contestants will compete for a five million dollar prize. You know, I like Vegas. I fucking hate gambling in Vegas. I don't like the slot machines. They don't give me a sexy anime woman when I win. You don't even win anything in Vegas, like ever. It's ass. Now, according to this situation, this is them working. I don't even drink is the thing though. Like I just like I just like going and seeing cool stuff and eating very lavish and fancy food and seeing cool shows. Yeah, there's no hard pity. After 90 pulls, I am not guaranteed to win f all sh all. And that's just not what it is for me. <laughs> At least Gotcha Games have hard pity. Working with Amazon Prime Video, okay? So at this point, it's gone beyond just online video production. We're getting into an actual broadcaster in this case who are making real big hit TV shows like The Boys, okay? It's crazy shit. Jimmy's gone wild in his quest for, you know, internet popularity. He's, he's made it. He's actually gone so mainstream, it's not even funny. So allegedly, according to Vital Vegas, these are the people that are like lined up and ready for- Oh, there's videos of this shit? Holy, putting on the garb. Putting the garb in garbage bags. For this bags. operation, right? They're like dressing in garbage bags or something at the actual plaza in Vegas. Now, throughout this whole situation, what's apparently come out, and this is a little bit more alarming, is apparently the people that are actually competing on the show allegedly have been passing out, came with broken bones, and various other injuries. Rosanna Pan- Broken bones is fucking crazy. Sino, the individual who initially called out Mr. Beast for a hide and seek kerfuffle, ended up coming out with apparently alleged, you know, confirmations Alleged, alleged, however if true, insane, but alleged. From the fucking people c competing in the show, actually sending her messages about getting injured. And apparently there's like over five, maybe 10 people that have come out allegedly speaking to her. So read some of this. One of the actual accounts was, it was really bad. People were having seizures because they were not getting medication, even though we were promised we would. And it was 100% rigged. They presented it as though the game would be like Squid Games, basically a type of game show where all the games are an even playing field. And that was not at all the case, all the games I mean, Squid, Squid Games was not exactly an even fucking playing field. <laughs> I understand the point, but if we remember, if we remember the plot and how Squid Games worked in the show, it was not exactly intended to be fair. However, how incredibly dystopian to try to redo Squid Games IRL and treat people this way. Games were about speed and strength, so only the young athletic males were at an advantage over the women and elderly people that were casted. To make things worse, men started realizing that they could take out the women without being eliminated. Which is crazy. The second that you start, like, the- The guys started insane. tackling and hitting women. Two girls were tackled and passed out on the field and dragged off to continue filming. Another account- Yeah, maybe the second we start tackling women, we just instantly end it or we like, you know, disqualify them because this isn't real Squid Games. And Squid Games is supposed to be a dystopian view of, you know, what happens when people are desperate and rich people take advantage of the desperation of the poor. The whole point of Squid Games is that it's disgusting and awful what they do to those people. Maybe we don't recreate it so closely in real life, you know? I said we were given maybe 400 calories a meal and only fed every 12 hours. People would, food Insane. would run out and people would fight over, steal, and hoard food. We didn't need to treat this like actual Squid, squid Games. And the second that any of this should have hap started happening, we needed to just cut that shit off. If this is true, which is at this point, this is alleged and not proven. But the second all of this shit started happening, needed to be cut off instantly. Water was scarce and kept running out as well. I had to sit with a bloody pad for two days before I could get undergarments and my reusable pads because I'm allergic to regular pads. Which is awful and can make you sick. We were only sleep, we were also sleep deprived, only allowed to sleep three to four hours. We all slept on the floor of the stadium in a $10 sleeping bag. If true, this is horrendous. Okay, again, these are alleged, but all of this is incredibly horrendous and dystopian and disgusting. We don't need to recreate the this the dystopian aspects of the squid games we could just make it fun you guys know of the stanford prison experiment it's a it's a really old uh case study essentially in psychology where they took college students and they separated them into prisons and prisoners and guards into a simulated prison environment and ultimately it went so disgusting and horrendous and uh, caused so much awful abuse and people went off the rails so fucking quickly that it was ended early and also became a source of a lot of regulations and ethical regulations and psych psychological experimentation now. That's ultimately what it is. But what it is is like, let's see what happens if we do this thing and then a bunch of awful f 
fucking shit happened and it was such an ethical and moral nightmare that like it changed how psychology was done forever and it was like a a massive source of like it was just a horrible fucking thing that happened it's like what if we just did that except there is no ethical uh regulation around it it's done by a youtuber and we don't stop it at early we just let it keep going it'll be fine it'll be so fun and hilarious Another account said they offered anyone who lost $1,000 to sign away their rights to join any kind of class action lawsuit of any kind. I didn't sign, so I did not get the money. After the article came out and things started blowing up, they called everyone back and decided to offer an additional $1,000 per person to make up for any inconveniences. Bribery to sign away your right to sue. Insane. Look, at the end of the day, what happened with Chris Tyson was just a wild situation on YouTube that unfortunately, you know, will require a third party audit to completely clear. And while Mr. Beast and the company say so, I personally never really see these third party audits really address any key concerns. I've never really seen a third party audit come out and go, oh fuck, shit is really wrong at our office. Uh oh, SpaghettiOs. So yeah, if this Las Vegas stuff is true, this needs to be addressed. And honestly, I, I could see Amazon, I, I think Amazon needs to be discussed even more in this entire situation. Now, going back to Dogpack's video, one of the people from Mr. Beast's team actually came out and wanted to debunk this stuff. And they debunk claims like, you won't get in a video unless your family or friends with someone that works at Beast. The train track was CGI, the bus wheels are CGI. Raccoon was a paid actor, Island cost more than a dollar. He moved into a mansion two months before being in a video. The wink was out. What the fuck is this? This is like, in post. this is dumb. Revenge storyline was added in post. Not only were the results of this video completely scripted, but the contestants were also not random subscribers. Uh, I also think some of the Mr. Beast giveaways are fake. And while these things, it's cool that you address them. It's crazy. It's like, here's the claim. Answer, nuh uh. I think the illegal gambling stuff needs to be addressed more than any other point on that list, which is very alarming that it hasn't even been mentioned. These are some of the least egregious claims made in that video. The illegal gambling shit, especially when you got a child audience, needs to be addressed. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the Mr. Beast, like Chris Tyson, like Discord messages that were leaked, one of the scariest aspects of it is the fact that potentially Mr. Beast might have unfortunately been involved in that search. Okay, potentially. All right. Can we just be clear about the difference between potentially and proven? Because in my chat earlier, everybody wanted to say, oh yeah, he definitely knew everything that was going on with Ava Chris Tyson and was involved in every single part of it and knew exactly what was going on. There's a very big difference between that statement and potentially was either involved or knowledgeable. Because potentially is not the same thing as 100% yes. So according to this one user, it uh, doesn't matter. Basically what they said was a couple of those posts from the Discord leaks apparently referenced Jimmy in this situation. One of the users were called Mr. Beast, who shared a YouTube channel belonging to Daniel Bregoli or Bad Bobby. So mm -hmm. down the road over here, what they said, the account that posted this had his user IDs leaked in the chat logs. The account had Chris's friend role. Keep in mind, user IDs never change, even after you change a Discord name. And all this right. is allegedly, you know, brought up by this. So one of those numbers is Mr. Beast, number 6451. So you got the actual Discord user ID right there. So with that information, 24753562, what they did was they actually looked it up through a tool known as Discord Lookup, where you throw in a user ID and it gives you an alleged name. The name of this right. situation was Jackin the Goat, an account made back in 2016. So the account used to own the server before the account the community notes mentioned took over, archive here. And uh, yeah, according to the situation, based on this archive stuff right now, uh, owned by Jackin the Goat, Mr. Beast Gaming, a server that apparently had 471,000 members, as was Jesus. archived on 28th July 2024. So that account, according to this video, actually allegedly had real actual links to it. So real actual connected accounts, like actual YouTube accounts. So what they did was they looked up that Jack uh, Keen account, Jack and the Goat, and they found out that yes, that account actually had the Mr. Beast gaming channel actually attributed to it, which from my understanding on Discord, you actually have to be able to sign into these yes. accounts to be able to link them on Discord anyways. So. Yes, yeah, so like you can't just link in that in that particular way of linking something. You can't just link something like you just put a link in there. You do actually have to be able to log in to YouTube in order to link it that way. And there we go. And there we go what? That it was his real account? That doesn't mean that he was aware of every single thing that happened in that server. How many of y'all have a billion fucking servers that you don't even go into? There is a very big difference between proving that he was at in the server at some point and actually knowing what is going on in depth, what is in that server and being involved and taking part of it. Those are different and you know that. If Mr. Beast allegedly, again, was in that Chris Tyson server, it is even scarier. And that third party review, I'd be very interested to see what they come up with. Look, at the end of the day, this whole scandal is blown up to a point where there is so much information that's floated in that this video is already an hour long covering it. But at the end of the day, I think alongside, there, there's a couple things to address. Obviously, if you're a parent or your child or anybody, never engage in a Discord server where things are apparently this laissez-faire, allegedly. 
don't let kids in Discord at all, my personal opinion. That's just without saying. Now, if you're Mr. Beast and the company, I think the whole allegations of illegal lottery, especially when you have a child audience, need to be addressed as soon as possible. That is fucked up beyond belief. And again, if you're faking, allegedly faking your entire games, to the point where now you're operating in the mainstream with big production partners like YouTube and Amazon, possibly faking your games for, you know, having a juicy video series is something that I don't know if it's entirely legally possible. It's definitely fraudulent and it definitely makes me look down on any of these productions and not interested, right. even if I wanted to watch them. And now that I have this tinge and feeling knowing that whatever I'm watching is not even a real competition, it's just fake shit put together for 12 year olds, I have no interest in watching it at all. I'ma be real, the reason I never watched Mr. P's videos was because I assumed that it was fake put together for 12 year olds. So part of it, the reason why I didn't really understand why this mattered was because I was like, yeah, of course it's fake. Obviously it's all fake. Like it's, it's for YouTube, for kids to make money. Like there's no incentive for them to be honest about most of that shit. However, I do understand better why all of this matters and there's a lot more that goes a lot deeper into all of that. So, but yeah, I never had any interest because that was my assumption anyway. But yeah, this is a wild story. And a lot of these crazy allegations are allegations. I want to stress that. I've said that throughout the video. Right. But down the road, I think what DocPack has come out with and what a lot of researchers and a lot of these leaks have come out with contain some of the most unethical, disgusting behavior I've seen on YouTube. And it's just a shame that it all ties back to the largest channel on the platform. It's not just a bad right. look for Beast or Chris Tyson. It unfortunately extends to the entire YouTube community. And part of the video that I'm making over here is a little bit of self-policing. I think, honestly, change comes from within the platform. And 100%. Mr. Beast has a lot to really answer for. I'm not even going to get into Chris Tyson because... Ava is, Ava Chris Tyson, I, I already find that person to be one of the most abhorrent individuals on the platform. And uh, I, I, I just, I really hope that they definitely amend or make amends for some of the really disgusting shit that they've done. The only good thing Mr. Beast has done is cut ties with that sicko. And that's pretty much where I'm going to leave this video. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it, I am out. What are my final thoughts on all of this? In no way did that prove that Mr. Beast knew what was going on in that server. Anybody who is saying that, you're stupid. Was he in there and post one link at one point? Yeah, that does not mean that Mr. Beast was fully aware of everything that was going on with the Ava, Ava Chris Tyson stuff. Could he have known? Maybe. Doesn't mean that that is that's the reality of the situation. Uh, most of the Discord servers that I'm in, I'm literally in them for the emotes. I don't, I've, I've never checked them. I joined them and instantly turned off all notifications because I wanted the emotes. Uh, and so spreading that around is really, really weird and dumb. And honestly, dangerous. That does not mean that anything else in this video is admissible or okay. When you are primarily making content that is very obviously in every way targeted toward children, in general, you should be responsible and you should do what you can to prevent the harm of children, but especially when you make content and have millions of children who follow you and idolize you because children do idolize Mr. Beast. The fact is uh, using these predatory practices is really gross and weird and disgusting and regardless of all legality, still wrong ethically and morally. I appreciated getting more information about all of this. I'm shocked by some of the things that I've learned. Thank you for joining me. Let me know what you think down uh, below about the situation. Come join us on Twitch if you ever have time at twitch.tv forward slash X underscore juice. Were you ever a fan of Mr. Beast? I'm legitimately curious. Like, I just feel like I've never really felt like I, I assumed that the content was fake and I was never interested. Anyway, I'll see y'all next time. Take care of yourself. Express some gratitude today. Drink some water. Take your vitamins. All that stuff. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.